my name's Jo and welcome to the third in this instalment of the RSB um, online conference videos with people in science. Um, so today we are talking to Chiara, so I'll hand over and she can introduce herself. Hi, I'm uh, Chiara Bertelli. I work in Swansea University as a research assistant, um, based here in Swansea, but I do work all around the country. Wow, that sounds exciting. So tell us, what is your actual job? What, do you, what are you doing as a research assistant? Um, so as a research assistant, I'm working on a few different projects. Um, I've been working mainly on a project called CCAMS, which stands for the Sustainable Expansion of Applied Marine and Coastal Sector. And we are working mainly with marine renewable energy companies, providing scientific expertise and survey work uh, to those industries around around Wales. Um, but I also work on another project uh, which is part of the Seagrass Ocean Rescue project which is funded by uh, WWF and Sky and that is looking at restoring seagrass meadows around Wales and the UK. Oh wow okay so um, if you're in that project so you've got two different projects going on what are you doing on a sort of day-to-day -day basis what do you get up to? So my days can be very varied because uh, within the CCAMS part of my job, um, I'm working on a few different projects and they include, they started off with seagrass restoration trials, um, which then expanded to a different project, which is why I'm now split into two different sort of jobs, really. So I, I do two different things uh, day to day. Um, but uh, with the CCAM side of things, I tend to work on uh, cetacean surveys. So for some of the marine renewable energy sector um, industry partners that we have, we work with them to look at cetaceans in um, areas where they want to put, say, a tidal turbine or a wave energy device. So that involves uh, planning different um, research trips and survey trips to either do observations from a boat or they can be from the land or we also use devices called sea pods which actually record uh, clicks of porpoises and dolphins so we can put these in the sea and record and monitor uh, the cetacean presence in that area. Wow that sounds awesome so you're going out and actually doing those kind of things and collecting yeah, information. So, um, yeah, sorry. Yes, we uh, try to gather as much information. So we'll probably plan to do for the cetacean work. We plan to usually do um, seasonal surveys. So we'll look at going out on the boat, um, doing surveys, boat based sort of transects out at sea. Um, that requires good weather. So that usually limits us to the sort of time of year. Usually we can't really go out in winter where we've got sort of less day like daylight hours and so on. But um, it's much better for sort of springtime, summertime work, sometimes autumn. Um, but with the other devices, we use the boat to take out the, the sea pods and then we put them on a mooring, drop them in the sea and we can leave them for months at a time. So that's really good for monitoring um, the presence of dolphins and cetaceans sort of offshore where you can't necessarily do boat based surveys but they're continually logging so you can leave them out there sort of over overnight and in winter months for example so you're still collecting data that's really important for the industry yeah that's awesome so because one of the other people we were speaking to as well was saying about how technology can help you to kind of get the information that you might not be able to get just sort of by yourself or or as a group through field work so um, do you do any other kind of field work yourself apart from collecting that sort of data, kind of different techniques you might use maybe? Yeah, so that's one of the projects that um, we use uh, technology for, for collecting cetacean um, uh, observation, well, cetacean presence. But we also do a lot of field work to do with the seagrass restoration project that I work on. <laughs> So for that, that's involved a lot of scuba diving. Um, we have been uh, monitoring certain seagrass meadows. We've been collecting seeds from seagrass meadows all around the country. Um, so I've been involved with seagrass seed collection, survey work, and also um, at doing trials where we've been planting sort of on a very small scale. We've been planting different either uh, seagrass shoots or seagrass seeds in little bags and so on. Wow. Um, 
and, and planting them in, in certain areas. Mainly it's been based in Dale in Pembrokeshire, um, right just outside Dale Fort FSC Centre actually. Ah, there you go, yeah. So is that something that you've always um, wanted to do, kind of like the scuba diving aspect sounds like it sounds amazing I love the idea of kind of it's like gardening like you're like planting a little allotment bit in the sea it's really cool yeah. um so how did you get into that bit is that something that you've always been interested in or something that you've kind of um, made your way into th through, a, yeah, through a different route exactly it's um it's been a bit varied I've always been interested in marine biology I studied it at university years ago I've done various sort of volunteer jobs um, I, I actually worked for the FSC for a short time teaching um, Rocky Shore Ecology a lot um, and then that got me into doing um, other teaching abroad and, and getting other sort of jobs along the way and then I got a job as a technician at Swansea University working specifically for CCAMS so I applied for lots of different jobs not really knowing which exact sort of area of research I was really interested in and then when I started in CCAMS, I was working on all sorts of different projects from seagrass to helping another researcher with cetaceans to working with somebody else looking at benthic fauna. So getting grabs and then identifying all the animals in there. Um, and I've also been involved with a little bit of the teaching, sort of helping in the field work sort of side of, of things um, with the marine biology students. Um, and so the seagrass projects that developed out of sea cams, they grew into a bigger project. Um, I've also been studying a part time PhD on seagrasses um, to sort of broaden my my um, qualifications. Mm. And um, say at the same time as working full time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, busy, busy. Quite full on as a full time member of staff and then doing a part time PhD on the side. I tried to sort of relate it to my work where possible so I can overlap mm. certain aspects and very sort of supportive managers and, and so on but a lot of it is well the majority of it is in my spare time so it is hard um, but yeah so I, I didn't know that I would go into seagrass research until I started at Swansea University started working for um, a researcher called Richard Unsworth who's a seagrass uh, expert and he wanted to look at seagrasses in the UK because they're very sort of especially 10 years ago when we we started at CCAMS they were very sort of under uh, appreciated and, and not very well known even though they're incredibly important habitats for fish and for carbon sequestration all sorts of things like that so really important habitats that people don't know are necessarily on our doorstep. Wow that's it's really interesting and, and you're right it's such a important branch of marine science and kind of you know those habitats that need to be protected and you're right people don't necessarily think of seagrass meadows as something that's you know it's not one of those hot topics in the news is it but it is it is really important they're kind of like nurseries aren't they for lots of different organisms yes yeah they're, they're really important nursery grounds for different fish species also crustaceans and uh, uh, bivalves like scallops um, you, you'll find them in seagrass meadows, especially when they're young. Um, if we found lobsters, we found all sorts of fish um, when we've done seagrass surveys. Um, they're also important for sort of um, really rare species like seahorses. Um, and although we haven't found any around whales recently, there's um, there are some areas in in Dorset and Devon that they've they've found uh, seahorses in seagrass meadows there. Wow. Um, really important for a lot of different species that that really like to live in seagrasses yeah that's, that's great and what an amazing opportunity to go and be able to kind of do those surveys and, and look for them so that sort of leads me on to my last question which is have you got a kind of um, a wow moment or a, your best sort of experience that you've had through this work something that you would sort of share as your best experience um so i I found it I find it hard to sort of put it down to one thing but I would say um, learning about doing all the different cetacean work and, and getting to do boat based surveys and we've seen minke whales and rissos dolphins and common dolphins bottlenose dolphins and and like the get having the chance to get so close to these animals and we've done some work from a very small boat a rib 
where we've been able to, we've been given permission and a license to actually work much closer to the bottlenose dolphins that you find in Cardigan Bay. Um, and that was amazing because we'd see them really close to the boat, almost within arm, you know, arm's reach. And wow. we were collecting water samples around them to, to look at, see if we could get the DNA out of the water samples. So that was another amazing, uh, amazing experience for me. Um, and then the other thing I would say was that because I was able to work with the students, the marine biology students doing field work and field trips, um, I was asked to go on the tropical marine biology field course, which took me to Puerto Rico, which I have to say was a massive highlight. <laughs> wow. Actually, yes, teaching a bit of um, tropical ecology in the field to all the students. Um, doing doing snorkeling surveys um, on coral reefs, which was amazing. Wow, that does sound really, really cool. I'm totally very jealous of that. Um, and what what I do want to say is, do you ever do you have you ever got to the point where you're like, oh, dolphin, or do you get excited every time? <laughs> I get excited every time. <laughs> yeah, still, um, it's still a privilege to see them because not many people get a chance to go on a boat yeah. and see dolphins. And although sometimes you'll see them in the distance, but if they come close to the boat, there's nothing, you know, you always get excited to see that. It's, it's, it's a brilliant experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen them. I went with my niece and we, we had a look and we saw a few, they were quite far away, but yeah, it's, it's one of the most exciting things. I think it's a privilege is the right word. It's yeah. a really good, good way of describing it. So if you um, could give any sort of advice to anyone, where would people find out more about seagrass if they, if they wanted to find out, um, any kind of information is there a good place to look or kind of sort of groups to think about joining yeah definitely we've um with with the seagrass restoration project that i'm working on the the people that have set up well richard Underwood leads it but he's also set up a, a charity called project seagrass which is um all about outreach so they've gone to local schools um they've got the local school children involved we've had them help us build all the um the lines and everything with within which we plant the seagrass so they've been helping us with construct the lines that are, are used to plant the seagrass and so on um, we have a couple of uh, staff members that go out and, and they they do education trips um, and outreach events to to local schools so project seagrass would be a really good place to look also um, you could look at Swansea University website and there should be links on there. Um, and if you search for Richard Unsworth, he's been on lots of short films and video clips. He's been on Con Country File. He's been um, on National Geographic and little short videos about the work that we're doing um, yeah. have come up on there. So That's good. So that's a good place for people to look. So it's Richard Unsworth um, and Project Seagrass. Uh, Project Seagrass is, Project is Seagrass. the charity that he set up to find yeah. out more. Excellent. Thank you so much. That has been literally fascinating. Um, and I'm very jealous of your job. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm hoping that it's, you know, you're going to get back out and get back out to fieldwork surveys very soon. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Chiara. It's been excellent to talk to you. I hope it's been enjoyable for our um, listeners and our viewers. Um, and hopefully that's inspired you to get out and find out a bit more about the coastal areas around Wales and around the UK. So thanks very much. And we'll say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>